Christopher Thomas from Promix and in the next 15 minutes I want to talk to you about um, complexity, um, inner sourcing and digital transformation and how all of them are connected to each other. Um, this is a little bit of a Hail Mary um, because I'm not an inner sourcing practitioner myself. Um, uh, we build developer portals and that's, um, that's uh, how, how I, I am interested in inner sourcing because you also use developer portals. And uh, my research is mostly based on the API world and uh, the open source world uh, where, I am, uh, where I have some familiarity. Um, as I mentioned, Spronovix, we're uh, a company that's fully def uh, dedicated to developer portals and the building of those with um, on top of uh, Drupal-based uh, product that we've been working on. Um, okay, but uh, first, what is digital transformation? Um, digital transformation is a bit of a buzzword and it means a lot of different things for different people. Um, I asked this question at, an, at a networking event in Belgium and uh, people were even talking about paperless documents, uh, which is very, very interesting. Um, but I think that if you, if you listen around you'll see lots of different things focusing around APIs, AI, Agile, uh, inner sourcing to some extent, open source, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's uh, all these different buzzwords um, that uh, mean different things for different people. Um, but I think that digital transformation, at least for me, is about two macroeconomical shifts and our ability to adapt as organizations to these two macroeconomical shifts. First one is um, the move from physical proximity to digital proximity. Um, what we are seeing happening today, um, like you know, banks are a really good example, uh, you see that physical presence and physical connection is being replaced with digital interfaces um, because it's cheaper but also because you can have a more targeted experience and uh, you're able to get access to all the products of an organization and not just the ones that a local office uh, is familiar with. Um, digital proximity typically is delivered through uh, custom, like digital pro customer experiences and um, through like digital interfaces and through APIs that enable um, kind of like random interfaces or the integration of your product into other people's products um, and then are that way also connected to developer experience and developer marketing. Um, to some extent, this is also relevant to inner source initiatives um, because you, your internal prosumers, um, producers and consumers, uh, will be co-creating better digital interfaces uh, than if uh, you just have a production units that is just producing them without interacting with others. Um, but this part of digital transformation is potentially a little bit less relevant. Um, or not immediately relevant to um, to your internal initiatives, or except maybe for the use of digital interfaces and the digital experience as it applies to uh, your internal experience for your colleagues that are using uh, tools and uh, products internally. And the second one, and this one is, I think, a lot more relevant to uh, inner sourcing, is the shift from a world that looked like it was static um, to a world that is unmistakably dynamic. Um, a, a world that's gone from complicated, where you could, if you were an expert, you could figure your way around, to a world where everything is constantly shifting and changing. Um, and, you know, I, I don't need to, I, you know, Corona is a very good example of that. Um, and, and even Corona is, is a result of our uh, networkedness uh, of our uh, today's society. Um, a really good framework to understand this, uh, I have found, is a Sinefin framework that uh, um, splits problems into four types or five types of problems. You have the obvious problems where there's a clear maximum. You just keep going up and you get to the top. Uh, you have complicated problems where uh, it's a rugged landscape. There's lots of little optimums and it's hard to tell before you climb the hill if you're going to be at a, at a maximum. Um, you have complex problems. Complex problems are dancing landscapes where um, your solution space is constantly moving and changing and the optimum is constantly being um, pushed forward and changed by the other competitors in the landscape. And then you have chaotic problems. Now, 
what I think has happened is that um, because of digital technology and because of increased pace of change that's digital technology enabled uh, because of our increased interconnectedness and our increased interdependence uh, suddenly uh, minor changes uh, somewhere in your market can have really big effects on uh, on every single player and i think this is the, the change that we need to ad adjust to now Nature has traditionally adjusted to this kind of problems um, by developing complex adaptive systems. Um, really good examples are uh, communities like uh, beehives and ant nests or uh, human society, but even our individual bodies of uh, individual species, uh, members of, of the animal kingdom or even the plant kingdom are examples of complex adaptive emergent behavior where lots of units are collaborating uh, to be more to become more adaptive to the changing circumstances that they might find themselves into now my my uh, one of my hypotheses um, in the uh, developer portal space is that through developer communities um, uh, dev portals or you know just developer communities can actually help companies to become um, more tuned for complex adaptive behavior so that they can better adapt to these changing circumstances. I've talked about this before. Now, um, and I think this is super relevant to inner source because inner source, if you start looking at it, if you start analyzing it, inner source, what it does is it helps companies to become more complex adaptive. Um, to explain, um, I really loved this uh, course. Um, it's also a book, Understanding Complexity, by uh, Professor Page, um, in which he talks about um, a model of complex behavior uh, where there's four parameters that determine if a system will be complex uh, or something else. And to be able to get to complex adaptive behavior, you need uh, just the right tuning of these different dimensions. So you can't have too much interconnectedness, you can't have too little, etc. Um, and um, practically though, because you know, these are, you know, yes, interconnectedness, interdependence, it sounds it doesn't sound that easy to, to really start working on this. You, there's some techniques that you could apply, but it's um, it's not that obvious. There, there are good metrics to see what's going on, um, but it's not always as easy to change them. Um, from another book that I read um, that talks about managing in complex environments, um, I learned uh, the, uh, this one, Facilitating Organizational Change, uh, from Edwin Olson and Glenda Ewang. Um, there's this is a treasure trove it's a really really good book that teaches you a lot of different things to help you deal with complex situations um, but one of the key things that stood out for me was uh, this idea of uh, high leverage points um, um, that's like three types of conditions that you can influence fairly straightforwardly or more easily as a facilitator um, that can help you to trigger uh, the conditions for self-organization. Uh, one is containers, and with containers uh, they mean uh, groups of people that could be online, it could be in real life, um, where you basically you change what groups of people are there in the organization and how are they connected to each other. And uh, by creating different grouping, you can trigger an organizational change. Second one is meaningful differences, um, helping to amplify um, problems, helping to amplify uh, dissonance, so that um, um, dissonance in the organization, uh, where it's not used to like destroy the organization, but as a trigger for change, that allow the or that allows the organization to adapt uh, to whatever is necessary to be able to survive. And then the third one is. Um, transforming exchanges is um, making exchanges more transformational um, so that exchanges um, that there's a better memory of uh, exchanges that have happened so in these three you, know, you can pick whichever of the three is easier to ad address at a given moment at a given time and um, they hang together and when you start changing uh, one of these or multiple um, they will trigger um, 
self-organizing behavior that changes the um, the nature of the organization. So uh, I think it's a, it's a really good tool to, to look at if you're trying to implement an inner sourcing program. Uh, like for example, I know uh, one of the audience members here uh, who's talked about this in the past, um, who uh, organized um, community community afternoon or community evening where um, people could come to talk about random subjects that they were interested in and it's created uh, if you if you look at it through this framework it created new containers that created new relationships that shape reshaped the organization and how it was working um, now besides these more cultural aspects I think there's also uh, some architectural things that we can do and I'm, I'm using architectural um, in a, a very careful way uh, let's say because I, I don't believe in in top-down as much um, but at the same time I believe that uh, when you know what kind of patterns you need to achieve for or what kind of patterns or what kind of architecture um, types you might want to end up with that you can start steering for them and help them make them um, crystallize faster out of out of the self-organizing behavior of your organization so now, um, I've got this principle that I've dubbed the, the principle of deliberate complexity which is that uh, if you want to create an organization that is both adaptive and uh, highly efficient, then you need to create layers and different groups of people and uh, tools that are high, high, more and, and less constrained in the system so that you can have both adaptivity and efficiency, that you can't have adaptivity and efficiency in one single unit uh, with the same level of constraint, that you have to adjust these. Um, and that, that means that um, you could, in your organization, build um, a set of tools um, like apps that allow non-technical people to reach technical outcomes uh, that are available to uh, everybody in the organization. That could be an open uh, an inner source initiative. You, you can create uh, platforms that uh, enable something really hard and make that easier, uh, but there are still required development and there are very little constraints, so you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, but um, uh, they're, yeah, but they're, they're like a standardized way of doing things. Um, be very careful with it, you don't want to over constrain things, but still, uh, platforms can make things easier um, to work. And then last uh, is uh, ecosystems where you're creating resilience and adaptivity by creating a loosely coupled network of players in your organization that work in a de decentralized way um, to, to create a more adaptive uh, whole. So if you bring these three types of architecture patterns, uh, platforms, uh, apps, eco like application marketplaces, application uh, listings, and um, ecosystems, uh, you get different forms, uh, different levels of constraintness that allow for more or less adaptive behavior. Um, and that then mixed together with inner sourcing uh, could um, you know, make an organization much more uh, effective in, in dealing with change. So I think that uh, to bring it all back to developer portals, I think that developer portals can be that interface where uh, you bring together all these different things, where you bring together your community, where you're keeping track of what's going on with your community, uh, how interconnected it is, how, how interdependent it is, um, uh, together with also the tooling, uh, the platforms, the apps, and uh, the ecosystems uh, to create an interface for your digital transformation program. And I, I want to uh, finish with this um, picture um, from Matthias Buscher from Deutsche Bank, who talked about dev portals as a sort of toolbox with different compartments where there's different um, tools that you can use, uh, that your organization can use uh, to build different things. And I think that's that's kind of like the vision that I have of a digital transformation, inner sourcing and uh, APIs dev portal. That's all. Um, if you haven't yet, we've got a mailing list about developer portals. If that's interesting to you, um, would love if you could subscribe. Thank you.